Welcome to the KJ and Lee Podcast with your hosts, Kurt and Jacob, two servants of Christ armed with the sword of God, the King James Bible, a microphone, and biblical solutions for modern worldly problems. Today, we have a very special guest of over 40 years in the ministry here to give his testimony, Dr. Douglas Marco. So open your ears, attune your hearts, and let's dive into the Word of God. I love his way. Thank you again for coming to our podcast of KJ and the with Kurt, Jacob, and the. You are a listener, but we also have a special guest today. We have Dr. Doug Marco, a special guest, very important to us. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna get into this really quick. But first, we're gonna touch on some things that we talked about last week. We do apologize, uh, Kurt. It's not three hundred additional copies of the Bible or different versions. How many is it? Uh, yes, I uh, went back and checked. Uh, there's actually over 450 different translations of the uh, uh, Bible uh, for English-speaking people. For English-speaking people, yeah. and, we, and the so King I, James. Uh, yes, and so I stand corrected. Last time I said there were over 300, there's actually over 450. So we do apologize, Radio Land, that uh, <laughs> we gave you false information. Also, we do a correct ourselves it wasn't the 80s Sunday night football Sunday night football began in the 80s however Sunday football began in the 60s when college took over Saturday television okay so we want to get that straight we're going to fact check ourselves as we go along amen Amen. please feel free to contact us and let us know if there's anything else that you'd like to discuss as well however we are going to again introduce our guest uh, Dr. Doug Marco Uh, welcome sir how are you oh wonderful thank you for having me glad to be here absolutely so uh, Kurt, you have a quick question for, for Brother Marco here. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we're just uh, excited to have you here, and I uh, would just like for you to just tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, I'm Doug Marco, and this is what I do. Uh, I talk for a living, amen? I'm a preacher. I've been a preacher of the gospel for 43 years. Amen. amen. Uh, giving the gospel message out to people, not just uh, in a church uh, in the United States, but around the world. Uh, I've been a missionary. Uh, and currently doing that as well, going out to the 1040 window, which is uh, uh, most of Southeast Asia, as well as North Africa, and uh, parts of the Middle East, that's all part of the 1040 window. And uh, we just came back, as, as you men know, uh, from being in the Philippines for a number of months where uh, COVID got us stu- uh, stuck there, mm-hmm. uh, which was a blessing to be there because we were able to feed so many families uh, for a week at a time. And I'm talking about thousands of people yes, who yes, received yes. food uh, because we were there and uh, we asked the Lord what we were supposed to do while we were there because everything's everybody was uh, locked in their homes, you know. So God gave us the privilege of, of doing that. And I've been a pastor for many years, uh, evangelist. I've traveled the country from, uh, from coast to coast uh, in, in America. And starting in the 1980s, I started traveling. I was the first chaplain at Ohio General Assembly. One uh, uh, was uh, was able to win a couple of Supreme Court justices to Christ, a number of senators and congressmen to Christ. We wow. got to the place where um, the congressmen would come to me for counsel, not just for spiritual counsel, but for issues that they faced. Um, what people don't understand is our government um, representatives are, no matter what stage of government they're in, are under a huge amount of pressure yes. to compromise mm-hmm. everywhere. Absolutely. They are offered all sorts of money, mm-hmm. all sorts of privileges mm-hmm. uh, for a vote, mm-hmm. just for a vote. And it's a very difficult thing. And I mean, they're offered a lot more than just money, too. And it's very difficult. And some of their marriages struggle because of that. Some mm-hmm. of their personal life struggles because of that. They did not anticipate that. They wanted to be representatives. Mm-hmm. They wanted to represent the people. And did not know all the evil that's involved with that. And so uh, we were able to counsel with many of them, help many of them. Uh, oftentimes when a new measure would come before the Congress, many of these men would get together and women would get together with me and we'd pray about what they should vote for. Amen. We'd look Amen. through the Word of God to find out what was uh, what was the right thing to do. Yes, yes. And it was a great privilege. And now there's another man that took my place uh, in, in the state of Ohio that mm-hmm. does that. Mm-hmm. And he's been doing it for almost 30 years now. Wow. Amen. And so uh, God's good. He's allowed me to do a lot of things, meet a lot of people, and win a lot of people to Christ. 
Amen. 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 That's what it's all about. It is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So tell us about your testimony. How did? When did you get saved? How did you I got get saved? saved and, uh, in fact, my anniversary of my salvation is coming up at the end of October. Amen. Um, I was saved uh, the day before Devil's Night. Actually, I was saved on Devil's Night in 1977, which is the day before Halloween. Wow. And uh, um, I was an entertainer. I was mm -hmm. a stand-up comedian and a professional clown. And, uh, there's groupies that come backstage and they just want to be around me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was uh, doing a lot of traveling, I was doing a lot of entertaining, uh, becoming uh, well-known very quickly. And uh, I had this uh, particular young lady that was a groupie that kept coming. And one day she was uh, after, you, you close, uh, nightclubs um, are a bar with food. Okay, that's really mm -hmm. one of my mm -hmm. uh, They didn't really have, uh, back when I was in entertaining, uh, they didn't really have comedy clubs like they have today. So uh, afterwards, we'd uh, everybody would leave, but we would still drink at the bar. Okay, So that's what the groupies would do. They'd come out, and if there, if, if there was a band with me, uh, the band members would be there. And if I opened for a band, then, you know, there was all sorts of things that would go on. And so um, uh, this one groupie that was there, this particular young lady, I had been there many times, and uh, she was really sad that particular day. And I asked her what was wrong. And she said, well, her brother's 12th birthday was coming up, I believe it was. And uh, this would be the first birthday without her dad, and then her dad had died tragically, and she told me the situation uh, unexpectedly and tragically. And, and I felt real bad for her, and so I said, well, listen, you know I do clown shows as well, so if you like me, too, I'll come to your mom, your house, your mom's and dad's house, and I'll do a clown show for your brother's birthday. Maybe that'll help you. Help. And she said, oh, really? How much would you charge? I said, oh, no charge. I'll do it free. And so she gave me the address, and on that particular Sunday afternoon uh, for his birthday, I, I, I uh, drove over to their house, and I did a 20-minute, oh, 30-minute 30 clown show. At the end of the show, her mother would not let me leave without paying me. And I said, no, you can't pay me. This is just free. And so she said, well, let me make you a hamburger. And uh, as a clown, there are specific rules that you have in your head that you don't do. One of those things is you don't eat, okay? Right, right, right. Uh, but, uh, you know, she was being very, very kind. So I said, okay, I'll eat a hamburger. So she, she started making a hamburger from scratch. And in my comedy routine I had this I had never I grew up as a Catholic I grew up as a Roman Catholic I'd only been to one other church and that was for high school um, when I was doing a study on different church religions Now I had read about a lot of religions but I'd never been to any other church except one other than Catholic Church and um, uh, to a Catholic growing up as a Catholic you have uh, you know you have bad things you have uh, you know uh, you're going to hell. Then above that, you have purgatory. Right above right. that are Baptists. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> then you got everything else in the world, and the right. Catholics are on the top list. Right. Right. And so the worst thing you could be would be a Baptist. So, uh, in my show, I did this thing about Adam and Eve, and I'd imitate black preachers. Right. right okay. Right. And I get all wild, and you know, right. I, I had a black voice. I did 23 different voices, and one of them was a, of a black preacher. <clears throat> and so uh, her her daughter was who was the groupie. Uh, was telling her mom about some of our show and how it went and so she asked me to do the Adam and Eve thing that I did which is really vulgar and mm -hmm. and pitifully unspiritual and incorrect mm -hmm. and anyway so I started doing that and all of a sudden the daughter who was the groupie said oh our preacher believes that and I said what she said our preacher believes that I said ain't no way and her mom said, well, I don't know, but I said, I'd have to meet somebody like that. And she said, okay, you can meet him next Sunday. Why don't you come to church with us? And I went, amen. Uh, I don't go to church. I got kicked out of the Catholic church. <laughs> I told off a, 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 a Monsignor, and I got my letter from the Pope that I was excommunicated because I was so disobedient. And I said, so I don't go to church anymore. And she said, that's okay. You can come. And so I kept trying to make excuse after excuse, and she said, well, don't you want to meet somebody who believes what you believe? I said, there ain't no way he believes that. Nobody would believe that. I made that all up in my head. I, I was high one day, and it came to me, you know? And at that time, I was quite the drug addict. 
Mm -hmm. I was high 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and had been that way for about two years. Wow. Um, uh, so she, I finally couldn't get her to say uh, that I wouldn't go, and so I finally said, okay, I'll come. She said, well, why don't you be here at this particular time, 5 o'clock, and we'll drive you to church. And church starts at 6 o'clock in the evening. I said, great, that'd be fine. So the next Sunday, I drove to their house, and uh, uh, we all got in their car and drove to the church. I had never been into a Baptist church. And I didn't know how they acted. There was no genuflecting. Right. There was no holy water to dip your fingers in and make the right. sign of the cross. There was no Lord's Supper, at the, or we call the communion at right. the end of the service. Right. Uh, I, they didn't. They weren't up, down, in, and out all during the service like mm -hmm. we do as Catholics. Gen, you know, mm -hmm. kneeling and standing and sitting. And uh, I thought it was quite interesting. And so the preacher preached. Uh, he preached on Ephesians two eight and nine. Okay. For by grace are you saved through faith. Yes. And that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now you got to understand, I'm a drug addict. I'm also a performer. So I'm dressed to the hilt. I've got, uh, this is the 1970s, okay? I got platform high heeled shoes on. <laughs> I have uh, long hair uh, that's all been curled up. Uh, looks like, I mean, I got a permanent, so it was all curly. I had uh, a, fl a fluffy shirt on, which had the fluff ruffles going down the front, and the big sleeves came down. The, there was like eight buttons that would button up the cuff, and then the puff would come over the cuffs. You, you know? were a full-time clown. Oh, man. I had these, these checkered blue and pink pants on, and you could see my feet coming before I would show up, you know, and they, well, in the 1970s, you know, they always had that mm, comical looking right. uh, character. There was, and that's what I looked like, okay? So certainly, surely, I walk into this independent, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist church, and I'm sure the preacher goes, oh, we got us a sinner today. <laughs> <laughs> but he preaches on Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and mm -hmm. not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And he preached about those verses. And he said this. I don't know what else he said, really, except this statement. He said, I'm a sinner just like you are. The only difference between you and me is that I have asked Jesus to save me, mm -hmm. and you haven't. Mm -hmm. So I, as a sinner, am going to heaven, but you, as a sinner, are going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. And I said, what? I had never heard that. All of my 21 years of living, which isn't very long, but you would think I would have heard something like that before. Mm -hmm. And he preached out of the Bible, and uh, at the end of the service, everybody stood up, and they had every, people started going up and kneeling at, the, they called it an altar, right? and they invited folks to come, and I wasn't going to move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just standing there. I don't know what to do. I don't even know these people. I don't want to. And all I can hear is, for by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so, um, I want to learn more about it, but I'm not going up there. At the end of the service, after it's all done, the, the preacher came over, and he handed me a gospel track, and he said, if I can ever do anything for you, don't hesitate to call me. Here's my phone number at the church. And then he wrote his home phone number on there for me. Mm -hmm. His name was Ron Lucas, and he handed it to me. He said, here you go. If I can ever do anything for you, let me know. So I said, okay. I could not wait to get out of that building. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did not want to be, be there. Mm -hmm. the, I, it was just not the place for me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get out. I got in their car. I couldn't wait to get in their car. Mm -hmm. uh, I got in their car. They drove me to their house. I said, thank you very much. Got in my car. And the first thing I did is I drove out their driveway was light up a joint because I wanted to get high. I wanted to get as far away from what I had just heard as possible. Wow. So I'm smoking a joint, driving down the road. Then I pull out of my hiding place because everybody who's ever been a drug addict, you have hiding places in your car where you have your stash for driving. And I pull out a pipe and I pack my pipe with some uh, um, uh, hashish and I'm talking on that hashish trying to get home because I do not want to be around this stuff. Because on Sunday nights, we don't perform. Mm -hmm. Sunday nights, nightclubs were closed back then. I don't know if they are today or not. I don't know anything about them, but they were back then. And so 
I got home and I went to the refrigerator and I started pulling out all the beer and drinking. I wanted to get as far away from this stuff as I could. So I picked up the beer, I sat on the couch and I po popped open the beer and it goes, Psh, you know, and the Psh said, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, oh. not of works, lest any man should boast. What? And I start drinking that, and I thought, oh, and I light up a cigarette, uh -huh, and, I, and I light uh -huh. a match, whoosh, and the match goes, whoosh, for by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of words, it's any man should boast. I went, what in the world? And I smoke the cigarette, and I go, yeah. whoosh, and as I blow out, I hear, for by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, it's any man should boast. I started drinking everything in the house. I, drew, I drank as much hard liquor as I could get my hands on that we had in there at that time. I must have drank at least a 12-pack. Wow. Smoked as much dope as I could. I was trying to get away from this. I finally pass out. Right. I wake up. It's middle of the next day, middle of Monday. I wake up, and I go over to the kitchen, and I need a drink of water because my mouth tastes horrible. <sighs> Go to the kitchen, I turn on the water, the water's going into the cup, and I hear, For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, so any man should boast. What? I drink the water, and I hear, My neighbor came and knocked on the door, and the knock said, For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, so any man should boast. I go to the door, and I said, What do you want? Because now I'm irritated, you know? Yeah. Right, and, right, uh, right. He, oh, she says, oh, I just wanted to come check on you. I hadn't seen you all day. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said, I just got off a, a huge high. I said, you want to get high with me? She said, sure. So she came in, and I made this big, long stogie of a marijuana cigarette. Wow. And, man, I toked on that thing, and every time I'd go, <laughs> would say, For by grace are you say through faith, and not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. Mm. Oh, my goodness. She said, uh, hey, you want some beer? I said, yeah, because I drank all of mine last night. She goes and brings in another six-pack. We down that um, thing, and every, yeah. uh, every beer says, For by grace are you say through faith, and not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. I go to work that night, and I... Uh, uh, you hear the applause of the audience, and the applause is going, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not as yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. Oh, my goodness. All week long. All week. All week. I could not go anywhere. I turn on the car, hmm, and the hmm, yeah. say, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Mm -hmm. And I'm not kidding you. It was constantly all around me, mm -hmm. everywhere I went. My dad called. I'm blown away. My dad never calls. I am so high. I am so drunk. I am running as fast as, and as hard as I can away from this. The phone rings, and the ring goes, Tring! For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I, I answered the phone. Oh, my dad said, you okay? I said, no, I'm having a horrible week. He said, well, uh, you uh, you want need us to come? No, no, I'm fine. I just, I'll, be, I'll call you next week. Bye. I, I have no idea what I really sounded like on the phone to him, but I must have sounded horrible. And praise the Lord, I was two states away from them, and they couldn't get to me quick enough. Right? Mm. I just didn't know what to do. So Saturday night, the show ended about 2 in the morning, and uh, I had already stocked up on as much liquor as I could get, and uh, as much drugs as I could get my hands on that week. Uh, 2 o'clock show was over, I stayed as long as I could and drank with as many people as I could. I finally got to the house and started pouring as much booze down my throat as possible, taking every drug I could get my hands on. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get away from for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works. Lest any man should boast. It's about four thirty in the morning and I'm literally it's driving me nuts. Mm -hmm. I'm under such conviction. Mm -hmm. So I go in my bedroom and I find that paper that that preacher gave me. Right. And there's his phone number. Mm -hmm. I can say, ah, I'm gonna call him right now. <laughs> so I did. Four thirty in the morning I called yeah. him. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> he said, Hello. I said, this Pastor Lucas? Yes. This is, this is Doc, Doc, Doc Marco. I don't know if you remember me. Surely he did. Okay. Of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in your church on Sunday. You said, if, I, if you ever need me, call mm -hmm. you. I, I need you. He said, what's wrong? I said, mm -hmm. oh, what's this getting saved stuff? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And he said, 
Well, if you'll come to church this morning, I will take the Bible and I'll show you what this is all about. Yeah, I say, you can come now. I, I'll be there. Click. Yeah. I went to my. I went and sat on my bed, and of course, what's going to happen? Actually, I got up. I got up, went to the bathroom, hugged my toilet for quite a while. Right. As I vomited into it. Right. Putting my head against the bottom of the bowl because it was the coolest thing in the house. Holding on to the toilet because it was the only thing not spinning in the house. Right. Got up, went to my bedroom, sat on my bed, passed out. Mm -hmm. It was about three o'clock in the afternoon when I woke up. Oh man, I was angry. I wanted to go to church. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find out what this was all about. I said, man, I don't even know how to get to that church. I don't even know where it was. Right. I didn't drive. So if I don't drive somewhere, I don't pay attention. Mm -hmm. But when I drive, I can get back to wherever I drove right. to. I didn't. Drive. I didn't know how to get there. Man, I'm not going to call that preacher back. I already broke my word. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, I know. I'll call those people mm -hmm. who took me last week. Right. So I called them. And her name was Anna. I said, Anna, this is Doug. Mm -hmm. uh, she said, yeah, what's wrong? I said, uh, listen, I want to go to church today. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get there. But I know how to get to your house. Mm -hmm. If I get to your house, can I follow you in my car to the church? Mm -hmm. She said, sure you can. So I, I drove to her house. Of course, I loaded up my car with all the drugs I wanted to take with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, I went in, spoke to them for a few moments. We got in our vehicles, mm -hmm. and I followed them to church. And all right. pulled in the parking lot. I went in, and everybody greeted me. And I'm not sure again what the preacher preached on. All I heard was, "For by grace are you saved through faith, and not yes. of yourselves; it's the yes. gift of God, not yes. of works, lest any man should boast." Mm -hmm. And the preacher saying, "I'm a sinner just like you are." Mm -hmm. I'm, I've never heard a man. Say who that. is a religious man to say that ever? Mm -hmm. No priest I admit has ever said that. Mm -hmm. I often ask priests because uh, I wanted to be one at one time. That's how I got kicked out of Catholic Church. I wouldn't be out of mud. And uh, I wanted to be one at one time. And I used to say to him, do, "Do you ever sin?" No, not very often. When you sin, who do you go to confession to? Well, I go to confession to myself. I absolve my own sins. How do you do that? That's not even real. That's not even honest. That's what I'd say to them. Right. You're a sinner just like, I, listen, I know you. I've heard you swear. Right, right. I've drunk with you. Right, We've right. both gotten drunk together, and I know drinking's a sin. I know right. smoking's a sin. And I've heard you cuss just as well as I could cuss. Right, right. And I know that's all sin. But this was the first time I heard a preacher, a reverend, mm -hmm. a, 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 a man of God, mm -hmm. a clergyman, mm -hmm. a man of the cloth say, I'm a sinner just like you are. And that's all I heard. Mm -hmm. They gave the invitation. I had learned that that's what it was called. Mm -hmm. And I'm standing there gripping the pew. You've heard the expression, people holding on to the pew with their white mm -hmm. knuckles turning white. Mm -hmm. Well, that was me. I was mm -hmm. holding on to that pew. And my mother, uh, the lady who brought me to church, her name was Anna. She ended up being my mother-in-law over time. But uh, she's standing there, and she's four foot eight inches. And she looks up at me, and she says, do you want to go up there and learn more? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm holding on to that, and I look down at her, and I went, mm -hmm, and I nod my head up and down. And she says, I'll take you. Mm -hmm. And she takes my hand mm -hmm. and takes me by the hand and leads me down to the front. Mm -hmm. The preacher meets me at the front. He said, would you like to know more about salvation? I said, I sure would. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this stuff means. All I hear is for by grace are you saved through faith and not, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. Mm -hmm. And I need to get this thing settled. And so he had me go kneel at the altar. He called a man by the name of Terry Petty. He was one of the deacons at the church at the time. Mm -hmm. Terry Petty went through all the scriptures, the Romans road, if you will, yes. on how that we're all sinners, how that mm -hmm. uh, Jesus died on the cross for each one of our sins, how much that God loves us to give his only son, Jesus Christ. And then if we don't receive Christ as Savior, uh, we'll go to hell. But if we'll ask him, if we'll call upon the name of the Lord for the purpose of being saved, Amen. then Jesus will save, save us. us. Amen. As he finished, the pastor came over to me and he said, now, uh, I want you to understand there's no feelings and emotions connected mm -hmm. to this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, sir. He said, would you like to ask Jesus? I said, yes, because I know I'm going to hell right yeah. now. Yeah. I didn't tell this earlier, but I had been shot 
two years before, and I almost bled out of the theater. Wow. The bullet had pierced a major artery, and literally I was bleeding out as they were getting me to the hospital. Um, and I knew then that if I had died, I'd go to hell. I knew it. Mm. There was no question in my mind. I was on my way to hell. Mm. I wasn't collecting $200. I wasn't passing right, I'm going right. straight to hell. And uh, I said, yeah, I would. So the preacher kneels next to me, and he leads me in the prayer. And I asked Jesus to save me. Amen. And he said, how you feel? I said, I don't feel any different. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. said, I just feel relieved. Mm -hmm. And I said, he said, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. Amen. I said, so he said, if you died right now, then where would you go? And mm -hmm. I said, to heaven. Mm -hmm. And he said, and who would take you there? I said, Jesus. Amen. He said, not a church? No, I said. Uh -huh. Not a religion? Uh -huh. No, I said. Uh -huh. He said, and so I'm a sinner, just like you're a sinner. Right, but now we're on the same side. Amen. We both are our sinners that receive Christ as our Savior. Amen. And I was so relieved, and it was easier to listen to him because he was speaking the same way I would speak and thinking the same way I would think. And so that's how I received Christ as my Savior. That is wow. an outstanding testimony. Thank you, Doctor Marco. Thank you very much. Oh, just let me add this at the end, if I may. Yeah, absolutely. Got in my car on the way home. I knew all the things I was doing was wrong. As I was driving down the expressway, I rolled down my window and I started chucking all of my stuff out the window. I chucked my pipe out the window. Really? I chucked all of my paraphernalia out the window. Wow. I never one time afterwards took any more drugs. Wow. Never had any withdrawals. Mm. Never drank liquor. And for having almost three years by the time I got saved, three years of being high, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and no withdrawals. Wow. God just took care of me. Amen. Saved me. And they gave me a paperback Bible when I was done, just a paperback yeah. novel size Bible. Yeah. And from that day forward, I've been reading the Bible every day. Amen. That is. Amen. That's probably the best testimony I've ever heard. I'm a young man, but thank you for sharing that. And I know if anybody else is listening, just by your testimony, A, they know how to get saved. Right. And they know what it means to get saved. Because yeah. that's ultimately what. What Kurt and I are doing here is we're trying to present the King James Bible. Not the King James Version, but the King James Bible. Amen. Uh, which is obviously, just by you quoting the scripture, we know that you got saved through the King James Bible. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. The inerrant word of God. Amen. And uh, that's that's just so powerful that you know, a lifelong Catholic at 21 years old can, someone can just speak plainly, yes. mm -hmm. plain English to a, to a plain person yeah, mm -hmm. and, and bring them back from the brink. Amen. And this just goes to show that just the glory and the majesty and the power of of God and and, and the, the power of, our, of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that His Word does not go out void. Right. That Word was with you, whether you were popping open a beer yeah. or doing whatever you were doing. God's Word did not go out void. It kept speaking to you over and over and over again, just as it says in His Word. He says, when He speaks His Word, it's not going out void. Yeah, Until it accomplish what it's going to accomplish. Amen. To that. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's good. That, that's hard to follow up. Um, so we know where you are now. We know mm -hmm. where you were then. Mm -hmm. What got you to where you are now? The Word of God. I read it every day. Uh, I, I read the Bible through the first 30 days from cover to cover while I was saved. Mm -hmm. I had never heard anything in my life that was honest about the condition of man, period. Uh, the Bible tells the truth about us. It tells us the good about us and it tells us the horrible about us. It's an honest book. It's a true book. Uh, and so um, I got saved. Uh, I started reading my Bible. The, uh, two Sundays later, I was baptized. Um, I never missed a church service. Uh, well, I'll tell you, if you want, I'll tell you a story about the first church service I missed and when it ended up to happen. Uh, but uh, I started praying. I didn't know anything. I, this was all a new world to me, and I didn't know anything. So every week, a couple times a week, I'd meet with the pastor, and I'd say, can I just ask you questions? Mm -hmm. And I'd ask questions. Mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. ask them all sorts of questions about things I read in the Bible. There were times when I read it through, while well, I was reading it through the first 30 days, there were times I set it down and got mad at God, put it down and said, I ain't reading this one anymore. Mm -hmm. At one point it said, uh, it talked about homosexuality. Right. Okay. And I said, I can't follow a God that doesn't love queers, mm -hmm. just like he loves everybody else. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I kept going, is that really what it says? Is that really what it says? I went back and read it again. That's not what it said. Mm -hmm. It says he hates the sin of homosexuality. Right. But he loves the sinner. 
Mm -hmm. And that's what we all are. Mm -hmm. He hated my sin. Yes. But he loved me, the sinner. Yes, he did. Uh, and so the more I read the Bible, the more God led me. So uh, within, uh, uh, I was, uh, see, I got saved. I got baptized in November. In December, I got called to preach uh, through the Word of God. Wow. And uh, the end of December, I preached my first sermon. And by February, I was the interim pastor of the church I got saved. What scripture led you to, to be? Wow. Uh, uh, it, it comes out of uh, Jeremiah, J Jeremiah chapter 1. Again, you're hearing uh, again, Bible pages. Uh, and uh, God doesn't do anything outside of his word. If you feel something emotionally, that's not necessarily the word of God or God speaking to you. Right. And I uh, figured that out at an early age when it came to the word of God, mm -hmm. at an early spiritual age. I know that God only speaks to man through his word. That's mm -hmm. the only way. It's not by feeling. It's not by emotion. Right. It's not by a vision. It's not by dreams. It's through right. his word. Right. And so uh, one day I was reading in Jeremiah chapter number one. Mm -hmm. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Yes. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. That means to set us apart. And ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Yes. I knew from the time that I was in first grade that I was to serve the Lord with my life I knew that there was no question when I went to a Catholic school first grade first class they said draw a picture of what you want to be I drew a picture of me being a priest because, because I knew I was to serve, serve the, Lord. the Lord and I knew wow. when I read that verse I knew immediately God was speaking to me hmm. before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee. I knew thee before thou comest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and set thee apart and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations hmm. And I said, Oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I'm a child. And that was my very first excuse to the Lord as I was reading his word and believed that he was calling me to preach. I said, I can't preach. I'm just a new Christian. Mm -hmm. I'm just a baby in Christ. Nobody's going to listen to me. And the Lord said un, uh, unto me, Say not that I'm a child. Well, that was my excuse. And now he's given me an answer for that excuse. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. So mm -hmm. he's telling me, I don't have to worry about what I'm going to say. I'm going to only say what he tells me to say. Right. So right. I don't have to worry about it. And then it says, be not afraid of their faces, because that was my next excuse. One of the reasons I became a clown was because I didn't want people to know who I was. Mm -hmm. And so I could do all sorts of things as a, as a clown in makeup that I could not do right. as Doug Marco. Yeah. And then my stage name was different than my real name. Right. And so when I was on stage, I was that character. Yes. And I would be those characters. Right. And so people didn't know Doug Marco. They knew the character that I was presenting to them. Yes. Okay? Yes. yes. And so... I, I don't like crowds. I don't. Mm -hmm. I still don't like crowds. All these years later, I would rather be a clown or or a character rather than who I am. But I can be pretty funny when it comes to those things. Be not afraid of their faces, he said, for I am with thee Amen. to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Amen. Then it says in verse nine, and the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words. In thy mouth. In no, mouth. No, wonder, no notice he's not saying, I put your words in your mouth. I put my, my words. words. Amen. And that's what I was to preach, his word. Isn't that something? I, see, I have this day set thee over nations and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, and to build, and to plant. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what God has done with me in my lifetime. Amen. He has sent me to nation after nation. And what have I done? Mm -hmm. I rooted out sin. Mm -hmm. I pulled down altars mm -hmm. to the devil. Mm -hmm. I've destroyed the wicked ways. Mm -hmm. I've thrown down that which the world tries to build. Mm -hmm. And I've built churches mm -hmm. and people. Amen. Churches are people. Right. Yes. And it's planted the word of God all over the world. Amen. So this again still That's speaks good. to me all these years later after mm -hmm. God called me to preach. Amen. So in 30 days, I read my Bible through from cover to cover. I got saved, read my Bible through, got called to preach, and shortly after that, within 45 days, preached my first sermon. Wow. What was your first sermon on? It was <laughs> my first, I remember this, okay? Uh, my first sermon was uh, uh, the same as the devotional that we had uh, by Brother uh, Andrew. Andrew the other day. It's out of uh, first, first, Thessalon Timothy. first Timothy. Yeah, First Timothy. Uh, and, it, and this was my first sermon and I thought man ain't nobody ever going to come forward here after this preacher preaches okay and so the preacher said the pastor said you need to practice your sermon so I, I got my the family that wanted me to Christ 
or I should say invited me to church, became very close to me and me to them. And so I got them together every night, starting Monday night after I knew that I was going to be preaching the next Sunday. And every night I practiced my sermon with them. And uh, it says, uh, uh, oh, chapter, I forgot the chapter now. Uh, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm looking as well. Oh, I'm in the wrong book. Where's the second Timothy? Second yeah. Timothy, yeah. Second Timothy. Chapter 3. Okay. And it says, uh, Know this, that in the last days yes. perilous times shall come, for That's men it. shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, uh, um, incontinence, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having the form of godliness, but denying the power mm. thereof from such to turn away. Now you've mm. got to understand, this is the 1970s. Mm. This had what we ex are experiencing in America today was not happening yet. Mm -hmm. This was not the way people were behaving. This is the direction our country was going. Yes, yes, okay? yes, yes, yes. You gotta think that in the 1960s, when I was growing up, in the 1950s and 1960s, we went from having a very contented life in the 50s mm -hmm. and the early 60s to, to a tumultuous life in the late 60s. In the beginning 70s, things yes. were just... So when I received Christ as my savior, things were getting back to normal. So this wasn't fitting our country anymore. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the message was more prophetic. Mm -hmm. And um, I told the Lord that if he really did call me to preach, which I believe he had, and of course I had kept arguing and telling him I didn't want to do it. Uh, and I did. I did not want to do it. The worst thing in the world I could have ever been was a preacher because I knew nobody would believe me because everybody that knew my life prior to this would never believe it. Mm -hmm. and, and still I meet people, even after all these years, who mm -hmm. I grew up with. And they'll say, mm -hmm. Doug Markle, what are you doing now? And mm -hmm. I said, well, I've been a preacher for 42 years, 43 years. And they go, you're a what? <laughs> right. You? Right. Doug right. Markle? Right. A preacher? Right. No way. What kind of, you got, what, you go to a college uh, online and get right. some bogus degree? Start right. your own? No, no. I'm a Baptist. You're a what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but this was a prophetic statement. And the altar, I said, Lord, if, if, this, if this is really what you call me to do, mm -hmm. then you, I've got to see a response from the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the altar was filled. Wow. Amen. At the end of the sermon. Amen. Mm -hmm. It was actually, I think, 30, 48 minutes long, 38 with the prayer time. <laughs> wow. Unlike anything I could do today. <laughs> right. Right. So I had it memorized. I still have the notes mm -hmm. to my very first so I, written on yellow legal pad paper. Wow. It's the best kind. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. It's just been fun. Yeah, I can tell. Mm -hmm. It's been the funnest thing in the world. It's been great. So we, we're running a little short on time. Um, we've got one last big question here for you. Okay. And um, I can generalize, I think, what your answer would be, but it's not. That's not my, your answer to me. So if you could offer one piece of advice to anyone listening in the world, what would it be? And how? Uh, I would say to anybody listening or anybody believing or unbelieving, if you had a piece of advice to give somebody, here's a, here it is. Read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Before you begin to read, just do this. Say, God, if you're really there, because that's exactly how I, mm -hmm. God, if you are real mm -hmm. and you are there, mm -hmm. then teach me what this is saying. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, I've done this with people all over the world. Mm -hmm. I have not had... Any come back to me and tell me that they have not received Christ as Savior, which is all in this book. Amen. And I would say read your Bible. Mm -hmm. First, I'd say to read your Bible to be saved mm -hmm. because it's going to lead you to salvation. Mm -hmm. Number two, I'd say read your Bible as a Christian. Yes. All decisions, everything in your life, God only directs through His Word. He never mm -hmm. directs through people. Now, He may use people to influence. He may use people to encourage you, mm -hmm. but he's not going to tell you to do anything that's not in, in his, his word. word. Yes. So we have to follow his word. So I would say as to be a good husband, I had to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. To be a good daddy, I had to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. To be a good preacher, I had to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. To be a good pastor, I had to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. To be a good soul winner, I had to read my Bible. Yes. To be a good prayer warrior, I had to read my Bible. That's how mm -hmm. I learned to pray. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to be a, 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 a missionary, I had to read my Bible. Mm -hmm. I, I've worked for many companies, even outside the ministry, in my lifetime, during the years I've been in the ministry. 
and I would say to anybody who goes to work every day to a job that's in the secular world, read your Bible because you may be the only Bible they read. And the only mm-hmm. Bible they're going to see is what comes out of your life. Amen. There's two gates to your life, mm-hmm. two gates to your heart, your eye gate and your ear gate. Mm-hmm. Okay, You hear the wrong thing, things, see the wrong things, you're going to do the wrong things. Right. But if you're putting the Word of God before you and you're reading it, and I like reading it out loud or listening to it as I, as I read it, and I hear it and I see it, that's what gets in my heart, and the Bible teaches us what's in our heart is what comes out in our life living. Yes. And I, I uh, had this happen just the other day. A lady, I was dressed like a slob, been working out in the yard, something broke, went to the store, and I, I'm walking out, and a lady says, you're a preacher, aren't you? Pardon me? I look like a bum. My pants are ripped. I've got oil on my, uh, spots on my clothes. My shirt's all full of paint. I got a goofy hat on. I'm unkept. Mm-hmm. And I said, yes, ma'am. I said, how do you know that? She said, oh, it's just written all over me. Wow. Isn't that something? And I think that comes because of reading the Word of God. Amen. So if there's anything I can tell saved or unsaved people, get a Bible, read the Bible. You say, I can't understand it. That's right, you can't. So ask the God to teach you Amen. what it says, Amen. and He will. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Yeah, we definitely should be. Bible study should be a sandwich, uh, sandwich between prayer. Yes, absolutely. Start no with question. prayer. Read your Bible. End with prayer. Yep. Amen. Amen. Uh, your testimony. That last part about the lady reminded me of of Matthew five sixteen, where it says, "Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven." And mm-hmm. she saw she saw the light of Jesus in you, even though you were dressed like however you were dressed. So, yeah, it's not with the that. outside. Yeah, it's the inside so that shows to everybody. Yeah. Right. yeah, amen. And I wasn't even giving out gospel tracts. I was trying to run in and get the yeah. part run out. Yeah, that's, that's amazing, amazing testimony. I've many times, you know, people have walked up to me and said, "You're a preacher, aren't you?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Can you pray with me? Uh-huh. Okay. And I have no idea how they know that. No idea. That's something. That is. God is God is great. Yeah. God, God is, is great. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, I think that's a good stopping point. Hopefully we can we can pick back up with Brother Marco another time after some more Bible study here. And um It was a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you very much for inviting me. The honor is ours. Absolutely. Oh, no. Amen. I appreciate the chance to tell other people about Jesus Christ. Hey, and if man. there's anybody listening that wants to know more about Christ, I'm sure they can contact your webpage or your email, and I'm sure you'll give them what they need to do. And what is your webpage and email as well? You can yes. go to preachingchrist.net. Preachingchrist.net. That's my webpage. And from there, you'll be able to get whatever you need. All sorts of materials on there. Sermons are on there. Bible reading schedules are on there. Uh, Sunday school materials are on there. Um, all, all sorts of things that will help people grow. I have a little section on how to read your Bibles on there, uh, how to be able to apply it to your life. Uh, preachingchrist.net. Amen. One word. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dr. Doug Marco, Sr. Amen. Well, Kurt, would you take us out? Yes, absolutely. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just so thankful, Father, for this opportunity, Father, to hear the uh, testimony of, uh, of Dr. Marco, Lord. And, Father, we just know, Father, that according to his testimony and your word, Lord, that your word will never go out void, but it will go out and accomplish what you have set it out to accomplish, Father. We just pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to today's edition of KJ and Lee. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to email us at kjnd at gmail.com or send us a message on anchor.fm forward slash kj dash the. And a special thank you to the Abbott family and Reach Ministries for their music used on this podcast. We hope you have a blessed day, and we'll see you next time.